Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to cover how to use a Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operation number sequence. So I was actually asked a little while back if I could do a video, an article on number sequences. So this is the start of it. Um, this article is actually going to cover functionally what number sequences are. And then where I'd actually like to get to is how do we actually create um, and use new number sequences on, say, new tables and forms within the system. But before we can cover that, we really need to understand what is a number sequence and how are they used in the system. So number sequences are actually tied to different um, forms and extended data types uh, and table fields to help generate unique values within the system. So here I'm in the all customers uh, form in accounts receivable customers. And here, if I actually click new, the system's gonna go ahead and generate a new um, account number for me. I don't actually have to remember what the very highest number is or try to look it up. Um, the system's gonna do that for me, and, and that's really helpful. Um, so that's, par that's a large part of what number sequences do. Um, additionally, they can have a specific format that tells us what type type of record it is. So in this case, it's actually just all numbers, but a little while later, I'll show you um, a record where it starts with a few characters, such as a sales order often starts with SO dash and then a number or purchase order PO dash. So using this predefined format for each type of record can really help a user, if that value is used on a related record, know what it's referring to without um, even kind of clicking on it and drilling into those details. Uh, so that's one of the real powers of number sequences. So how do we set one up? We actually go to the number sequences form. It's actually this second one here, number sequences under organization administration number sequences. This is gonna show you all of the existing number sequences in the system. Usually if you're um, you know, working with an existing default company, you're gonna see all these in here. Or if you import this data, you, you'll see these in here. Uh, oftentimes it's great to start with um, these predefined number sequences. Um, but what if I'm looking for a specific one? Uh, you can actually use these area and reference dropdowns to find that one. So for instance, you know, if we were looking for the sales order one, I could actually scroll down and I see that there's a sales module and then click on the reference and I'm going to look for um, sales order. And so I can actually see that this, these are the number sequences used for the sales order purpose, um, but I haven't specified which company um, the number sequences use. Some, as we'll see in a second, some number sequences are shared across all companies, um, but most of them I would say are usually company specific, and so we need to specify what company we're using. So right now I'm in the USRT, so I'll, I, if I'm curious to see what number sequence codes are set up specifically for this company, I can see right here, and I can see that the number sequence code is SAIL322. I can actually drill into this and see what makes up the details of a number sequence. So let's spend a minute now kind of looking at those details. First, I've got a number sequence code and a name. The next piece is I have a scope here, which as I said, most of these are gonna be um, company or shared. And if they're company, they're gonna specify the company. This just means that the system's gonna generate a unique value for this company and that this number sequence code is gonna be used in this company, not another company. It's very useful to have it tied to a company as opposed to shared across the entire system because if it's shared across the entire system and you have a lot of data, a lot of records for this type of reference, um, you might run out of numbers. So kind of splitting it by company gives you that many more numbers. Uh, kind of uh, moving beyond that, we actually have these segments. And so this is one of the real powerful things of a number sequence is we can just have an alphanumeric 
um, segment like this where we say pound, 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 pound. And each of these pound symbols will get replaced by the system with a number each time the system asks for a unique number. Um, but in addition to that, we can actually add some. I don't know if it'll let me add right here, but I can click and actually specify either the company and it'll use my company first, or I can even use a constant. And so I could say SO dash as my prefix. It's going to take up three characters of length and then add six numbers behind. So in the end, I can see my format will look like this. It's really powerful to use a constant uh, again so um, someone looking at this record immediately knows maybe what it's referring to um, as you're working across different types of uh, number sequences. Okay, so after the segments section, we've got a references section. The references um, is where a user who's setting up this number sequence can specify uh, where this number sequence is intended to be used. So if I just set up a constant with SO, it wouldn't make sense for me to use this on some arbitrary reference out in the system. So I can help um, define how I want this number sequence code to be used by specifying an area and reference. So here you see the area is sales, the reference is sales order. And we'll look at another one here in a second so you have another example. This tends to trip people up. Um, typically, you're going to have one number sequence um, per reference. It, it looks like now if I click add, um, and actually I'm going to maybe back out of this first, but if I click add, I actually can check a checkbox where I can maybe reuse a number sequence for multiple references, but that's not uh, typical. Usually we're going to set up um, some number sequences and only um, have it tied to uh, one reference, um, and then we'll tie that to that reference here in a second. Okay, moving on, we have this general fast tab. In this general fast tab, you can see whether this number sequence is in use or not. So the system will actually kind of mark this as yes if um, the system's already generated a number for uh, this number sequence. We've also got this manual flag. We want to leave that no because oh, you know, a huge part of the benefit of a number sequence is usually allowing the system to generate that for us as opposed to having a user manually type in a number and, and kind of try to guess to make sure that it's unique. There's also this smallest, largest, and next. This actually shows us um, what is the range of numbers that the system's gonna look for. So, you, you know, usually we start this as one, but you can always bump this up higher if you have a specific need or, or you know, it's overlapping with uh, some legacy data that you might have had in another system. The largest number is going to default to all nines for as many pound symbols as you have here. So I've got six pound symbols, so I've got um, six nines right here. If I run out of numbers, for instance, uh, occasionally I'll come in here and the system will have used all of the available numbers, this next number, which refers to the next number that the system's going to generate. Um, that will be 999999. Um, if it's those six nines, what we can actually do is usually come in here, add another pound to this alphanumeric character, and it will uh, increase the number of um, available uh, numbers we, we can have it to and now you know we're set we can uh, put in an extra nine in here and now it can go up to seven nines that gives us a higher range also occasionally I've run into some strange issues where um, I'm getting a um, duplicate record error usually that's related to something else but if you wanted to you could come in here manually say I want to try specifying a higher record um, and the system's going to use this next record that you've got in here again usually you've got another problem if, if you're getting a duplicate um, record error lastly I want to talk about this continuous flag when this continuous flag is set to yes, the system's gonna uh, not skip 
any numbers. It's going to always try to use continuous numbers and go back and reuse any numbers that may have been deleted. Um, this can impact performance and um, cause some extra trips uh, to the database to make sure that it's not skipping any numbers. So uh, I actually recommend if you don't need continuous numbers for a business sense uh, that you leave this flag set to no. And that's uh, also included in Microsoft's document I've linked this in um, the article, but Microsoft essentially uh, talks about the pros and cons of setting this continuous flag to yes and, and some of the performance implications of using that, um, as well as how to do some cleanup of the number sequences if you do want to reuse um, some of the numbers that may have been deleted. Lastly, there's this performance fast tab. I'm not going to talk about it um, much, but essentially it'll, it allows the system to grab the next set of numbers and, and have those ready to be used um, as opposed to if you've got multiple users in the system trying to use a continuous set. Okay, we've talked about how to set up a number sequence and all the different pieces that make up a number sequence, the format, the references, um, the setup, as well as performance. Now let's talk about how do we tie a number sequence to a particular reference within the system. Um, that is usually done, it depends on the type or the scope here, but if it's company, um, we actually can set that up on the parameters form. So I'm going to go over to accounts receivable parameters. If I search for it, you can see the path for it. It's under accounts receivable setup accounts receivable parameters and essentially every module uh, a module being each one of these drop downs along the side each one of these is going to have a parameters form inside of it usually named the, the name of the module followed by the word parameters and that's where you see all these generic kind of setup um, components that control that module um, in each one of these parameters form there is usually a number sequences tab. I'm going to go ahead and click on that number sequences tab here in accounts receivable parameters. In this tab, you're going to see a grid that lists all of the number sequence references for that are associated with this module. So here I can actually see customer account, which is what we were looking at um, right at the first when we started this video. And on it, uh, the user gets to specify the number sequence code that should be tied to this reference. Um, so initially, when you're first setting up uh, D365, you're going to come in here and this grid is actually going to be pre-formatted for you um, with all of the references in the system. But then you need to specify the different number sequence codes that you want tied to them. And if you're using a demo data a company like this, then these will be filled out. Um, so here I can see the um, this number sequence code is tied to the customer account. And that means that whenever I create a new customer account record, it's going to use the rules and format defined in this number sequence code uh, to create that customer. So, you know, if I look back on my number sequences form, on this number sequence form, I can actually change the area to accounts receivable, and then the reference I can change to um, customer account. And then lastly, the company dropdown shows, I can show that for this company, USRT that it's using this number sequence code. So I've set it up and then I've tied it to it in the parameters form. Here I can see it's just going to use six alphanumeric uh, characters and if I actually go to the all customers form and create new um, it, it's creating a new record. So that kind of ties us the full um, breadth all around. But what, what happens if I had a number sequence that had like a prefix? Would it use that prefix? Let's take a look. I'm going to filter and show this USSI number sequence. And I can actually see it's got a format of US underscore SI underscore then a number. 
Um, and so uh, if I were to go to all customers and change to that particular company, I can see on this form that sure enough, all of the numbers kind of follow that format. And if I were to create a new customer um, here as well, then I'm gonna get a new number generated in that same format. So that's how we tie uh, number sequences to their associated reference. Okay, lastly, how do we create a new number sequence? There's really two different ways in case you, you, know, you don't like the number sequence that's being used, you wanna set up a different format. Um, you can either click this new number sequence form or button, and it's just gonna create a new empty record like all other records in D365. You can come through here, fill out the code, the format, what reference you want it tied to, um, et cetera, and then save the record. The other way that you can do it is uh, through this generate button. So I'll click delete and then close this form. I can either click the generate button there or I can do it here. When I click the generate button, it's actually gonna give me a wizard. Um, and this wizard's actually gonna look in the system for all number sequences that are potentially tied to an operator operating unit or some other type of record that requires a number sequence that may not be so obvious. So for instance, uh, when you create a new retail store, a new retail store is actually tied to an operating unit. And specifically, there's one called 203. And every new operating unit requires you to have a couple different types of number sequences, one um, for s posting statements and one for vouchers. And so this is a little different type of number sequence. Well, when I run this wizard by clicking that generate button, um, it helps me find those. So first I get a welcome screen. It tells me what it does. I can click the next button. And then here, the system's gonna show me all of the number sequences that it's looking to help generate for me um, for the purpose. And so if I scroll down, I can actually see that it's trying to generate one number sequence code for a statement number and one um, for a voucher. I can see the format naturally is 203 dash pound, 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 pound. So the system's kind of helping me out in creating these particular number sequences. I can click next and then finish to actually get them created. Before I do that, they're not created. Um, so this is just another way that we can create number sequences, especially for those uh, number sequences that aren't tied and related within a parameters form. All right, that's what I've got you uh, for this video. Uh, so as a recap, we looked at what number sequences do, how they're used to create a unique number, as well as how you can control the format of that number sequence and help a user know what record they refer to. Uh, we then also looked at how this number sequence is tied um, to a particular reference in accounts receivable parameters as well as other parameters forms. You can see one again here in commerce parameters. Um, and it's also important to note that if that scope is operating unit or a different type, uh, you can have additional number sequences and those can help get set up using that wizard. In the next video and lesson, I'll show you how we can add to this grid a new number sequence record for perhaps a new type of record that you've created that you want a number sequence for, and then also how in X++ code, we can ask the system to give us a new unique number for that record. All right, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.